Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Innervated Podcast, the show of Ghost of Gamers, all about Hearthstone, bringing you the hottest news from the Hearthstone scene. I'm your host, Russell Niger Kolev. This is episode 45, is it? Yes, it is 45. And I'm joined, as per usual, by my two wonderful co hosts, uh, Sumadin and Chiv. Boys, how are you feeling? That, that's tonight? not what you were saying about five minutes ago. No, no, but like on stream. We're all best friends, and you're all beautiful, and like every girl's dream, no matter what I tell you off stream, which is the exact <laughs> opposite, basically. You cat molesting bastard. And cheers, I have uh, Strong Ball Apple Cider, the best apple that, cider you that, can find. That, yep, yep, I, I, I cannot disagree with that shit, man. I used to work in a lot of places that had that shit on tap. Oh boy, did that cost me most of my paycheck. This is probably one of the better things that have come from UK. So it goes like I this. I think it's the only good thing that came from it, UK. It goes like this, like, subtle, strong ball cider, uh, shepherd's pie, raven, yeah. and then other stuff. I, I don't know. Wow, raven, you rank lower than a carbohydrate nightmare. Yeah. I mean, he's because he's lean and mean, unless the, unlike the shepherd's oh, pie. Oh, cap of pride. See, see I, I, yeah, I had something in mind. <laughs> it was not at all improvised on the spot. But anyways, enough, enough. But how are you guys feeling tonight? It's been, uh, we, we're we're streaming on a new day, and it's going to be like this going forward because of other activities we just announced about Ghost of Cup expanding to three times a week. So we're going to have yep. some shell tournaments on Monday. So yeah. Uh, Innervated is on Tuesday. How how is this affecting your world of Hearthstone podcasting? Which I know it's well, it means we still overlap with Star Series, Star Letters. Yeah, meh. Who cares? Yeah. Anyways, we're um, we're, more, we're more important anyway. That's all. That's we, how we're I way look more at. important than Star Letter. Actually, I feel bad because Star Letter is. I've said it before. By far, my most favorite online tournament production because man they, oh, yeah. they rock they really rock like they they, they, they really do it they they bring their a game just not just in production but in their selection of who they bring uh their system is actually probably the most ideal one out there and it was one that everybody used back in the day but then you know blizzard kind of forced that uh everyone's hand and starlighter said fuck you we'll do what we want mm -hmm. so I like yeah, it. they like making money, basically. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, I like making money. Uh, should should maybe start doing that, but uh, yeah, I mean, what what I like about Starlight, and we we're kind of hopping through topics here. We we shouldn't have started with this, but since we are on the topic, why the fuck not? Um, what what I like about Starlight is how organized they are, like in every single tournament they stream. Like they, they give me day by day, hour by hour schedule. It makes my job extremely easy. To do. Uh, are you, and, they're not tweeting you results in a language that you have to go Google? No, no. I don't even have to follow their Twitter, which I do, uh, nonetheless, but, you know, it's amazing. And it's amazing, not man. sent through SMS images no, or something? No, oh my God, that was such a clusterfuck. <laughs> no, no, nothing will ever be WCA score reporting. <laughs> Unless, uh, uh, until maybe WCA 2016, I'm, fingers crossed. <laughs> we, should, we should get perfect world organizing Hassan tournaments because this shit's going to be amazing. <laughs> For that incident, let's just put it this way. They couldn't give us a bracket. They couldn't give us anything. They were just kind of tweeting out these results in no particular order. And then I had to sit here and listen to Nigel go, what the fuck is this shit? Every time. <laughs> can't, can't wait for the next edition. But yeah, uh, speaking of Star Letter, the, the tournament, at least the World Division, now it's in its top 16. Uh, Group A is actually being played as we stream. We have Orange, Sifko, Skaka, and Dr. Hibi. And the last time I checked, Dr. Hibi was leading on Sun Sifka in the winner's match. Orange and Skaka are playing in the loser's match, which means... Yeah, one of them is going... Well... Right, yeah, one of them is going out of the tournament... And the yeah. other one is going to the the last chance um, match. Match, yeah. yeah. So uh, people are saying, I have a question for Ghost Gamers, guys. Whatever you want uh, to ask, just ask it in the chat. And once I see it, because the stream is on a one minute delay for whatever reason, I'll see it, put it on stream, address it. We can comment on it. So don't don't hold back. Ask whatever questions you want. But yeah. I mean, it's uh, the best uh, Group B is Kranich, Colento, Super JJ, and Surrender Plate tomorrow. 
a group C is Izo, Dog, Naaman, Thyssen L. Probably That's a, a strong that, one. That's probably yeah. the group of that right there. Uh, and we have Group D with Hoy, Cypher, Job, and Life Coach um, played oh. on, what's this, Friday, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, oh, Toast is here and Raven is here calling us assholes. Thanks. We, yeah, we, we love you bitches too. Oh, God. Um, Toast, I love you. Um, like, just as a friend. I don't, I don't want Stan Sivka coming and beating my ass. Uh, oh, hold up, hold up. Something just oh, came God. in the chat I gotta, I gotta talk about. No, we are not reenacting DreamHack chat. If I ever see that enacted, I, I've made contacts with Twitch. Yeah. And I have the funding now. I will be knocking on well, your you, door. You know who, who's asking, right? It's the, 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 I know it's one admin. of my. <laughs> it's your, yeah. it's your chat admin. So. Um, oh, he knows how I feel about this shit. He knows. Okay. So, so uh, somebody's asking why is Ghost of Gamers ranking not reset? Because it was an April Fool's, buddy. We are not going to reset the rankings. Which is, by the way, a question I get. I got asked like six or seven times from pros and random community members included. No, we're not resetting the rankings. No, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, I, I know that a lot of people wish for it, but this is losing a lot of data. And give, I, will, I will explain why. It's a valid question. I, I know it, it, it was a joke um, and a pretty well-concealed one, so shout out to Tom Mathieson who, who came up with a devious plan to fool the entire Hearthstone community, uh, having the effect what like... Uh, a month and a half later, but um, the reason why we don't want to reset rankings is because data in Hearthstone takes a lot of time to establish itself, right? We, we need to gather a lot of data before the rankings start to make ma making sense again. Like, we are now in 2016, midway through 2016, and we've been having logging tournaments since October 2013, and you can still see that they are not perfect just because we don't have yeah. enough data enabled. So if, if we restarted the rankings, uh, with standard, which was well, uh, May, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. It would be. Um, we would be looking at a ridiculous ranking. So th this would bring a lot of criticism to the table. Like uh, it would uh, devaluate all the work we've done through the past uh, two years uh, to to establish the rankings. Because you know, unlike. I like games like Dota 2 and CSGO where you can rather see, you know, there are dominating teams or p uh, players, like if you're talking StarCraft 2, that uh, that continuously win games because these games are not affected by RNG or Cardro or whatever. You know, maybe resetting the rankings in these games makes sense, right? But in Hearthstone, it's so volatile, it's so unpredictable, so many games are not won by necessarily the better player, so you really need the critical mass of games to have an adequate ranking, so... Resetting the what's essentially been two and a half years of tournament logging would be disastrous. So this is why we're I I, I think a better solution to this would be adding like another tab within the rankings yeah, but, that just focuses on the seasoning, yes, and, th and then all, all those results are still tabulated into the global. Yeah, th this is one. something we are considering, but because we're currently reworking the entire back end for the bigger and better Ghost of Gamers that's coming, hopefully soon. later this year, soon TM. You know, <laughs> So we, we have a lot of good ideas about the rankings, but what you see will not going to change uh, anytime <coughs> soon just because it doesn't make sense to make changes to an old system that's going to be replaced by a newer system. So, um, yeah. Well, well, just just make sure to fucking post no, it notes this shit on that new system. Yeah, so, so sorry if I'm rambling, but it was a legit question, and I feel it deserves a legit answer. It, it is, actually, really, so I'm... I'm I'm not making fun of you, but uh, but if we're asking it, it's a valid one. So I, anyway. I'm just glad you guys fixed your points. Oh yeah, this was ridiculous. Oh yeah, you had somebody who should have been a top five player sitting at 39. I was like, that's not right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but okay. Speaking of other tournaments, uh, we we keep forgetting, but China versus Europe season three is happening next Monday. Yep, it, mm -hmm. the time has come. Uh, where eight European players will go, eight Chinese players. Once again, there's a Ferrari on the line. We have Super JG Lento, Life Coach, Naiman, Orange, Oskaka, Tyson, and Stasif. So basically the same people you they see They don't want to lose that Ferrari, basically. Yeah, uh, they are, they're just trying to kick some talent into the, their players, but they don't actually want to give that Ferrari up. <laughs> by, by the way, did you guys know why a Ferrari is being offered? It's actually an homage to one of the first esports tournaments that ever happened for, I believe really? it was Quake. I did not Wake. know that. Really? Yeah, actually, the developers for, like, Quake, um, for this giant tournament that they were doing, they were giving up 
their car, which Wait, happened to be a Ferrari. I remember this, yes. But yes. it was, like, so long ago. Fuck like, you. No, it was, like, I remember reading about this in year 2000, maybe? Yeah, it was so, around uh, 2003, I believe. Yeah. Something like that. I don't remember. Okay, so maybe but, yeah, that, that it was one of the first I big... I was eight e years old. Yeah. All right, so you were still in Pampers. But it was one of the first eSports events, and the big prize was... Uh, it was a used Ferrari, but fuck it. A used Ferrari is still a Ferrari. Yeah. Don't give a fuck who you are here, but... Yeah, that was a great thing, and so we're seeing that tradition carried on. It's like, we don't forget our roots, ever, which is a good thing. I, I did not know this. Uh, isn't it possible it's entirely coincidental, or did it... It also could be coincidental. <laughs> it could be, but, you know, I mean, this is China, and they do like to honor their lineage and their ancestry, so well, why not? I don't not? think they have any lineage in Quake, though. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't think it's. Ah, anyway. Oh no, our always show it likes it. Oh yeah, this is great advertisement for them. Absolutely, absolutely. I think it's uh, Nettie's a CEO of Ferrari actually that's being given away, or or at least this was the case for the the previous China versus Europe, um, something like this. And that doesn't really matter. It's a fucking Ferrari. So I think it's still like an eight men, like sixteen player single nation bracket. Played over two days or whatever. Um, I think yeah. like Europe will crush it again. But I don't know. Single seems likely. Seems, seems likely. Like, I mean, like, I think we discussed it uh, in some of the previous episodes about who's, which player is missing in this lineup. It's basically the best of the best, right? It's Jesus Christ. I, I'm not envying the Chinese. I mean, they're they're uh, putting their best, but uh, their yeah. best is not good enough to to beat Europe. <laughs> Uh, we'll see, we'll see. Maybe, maybe that's their wreck-up performance. Um, let's move to some bigger and more important tournament, namely the ACT European Spring Preliminaries, which concluded this Sunday. Uh, and we have, we know the eight players that will compete in the European Championship. Uh, I think it's in June, I'm not sure about the... Uh, the dates have been announced, but it's mid-June or something like this. It doesn't matter. Something we like will that, have yeah. another episode for this, obviously, separately. But From the upper bracket, we have Crane, Lion, Tyson, L, and AK, Wanda... So uh, this is the click of the big known players, yep. and from the upper bracket we see Einer from Russia, Casey from Germany, George C from UK, and Turner from Italy coming uh, to challenge the big names. Um, so yeah, it's a half and half split between heavy hitters and up and comers, which is awesome. Like it's mm -hmm. it's way 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 more exciting than the the winter championship lineup because. We kind of like there, yeah. there was only one person in the winter yeah, championship lineup nine, that we even cared about, and that. then he won it. Like, yes, <laughs> and that's probably what's going to happen here too. We have four players that we actually care about, and one of them is probably the winner. Actually, Tides. that's that's not true because I mean, okay, while he was in the lower bracket, George SC impressed me quite a bit with his meta read and his advanced knowledge of how people would have to play around certain things because they knew what he had in his deck. So having to play around that created this very interesting scenario for him. His explanation on that was fucking top-notch, and I think that this kid might actually be something. Still, it, sides do that kind of stuff in his sleep, so... Well, yeah, that's true, too. But we've never seen that sort of advanced mindset from the UK people, Raven. <laughs> <laughs> from, from the UK Raven. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm... Um... I'm impressed with Loyan as well. Like uh, this guy has been hitting number one legend with Shaman a lot. Uh, so finally, that good hard. Um, well, it's mid range Shaman, right? So it's a bit hard than than Agro Shaman. But two uh, two reps of complexity in uh, in the championship. So I think like Fantasy is somewhere you know jerking himself off. Uh, oh, are you kidding me? That, that man is li he's literally covered in body oil, rubbing up on everything at I, this point. I, I think that that's pretty accurate. What's what's happening? Like, I, I should ask him like for for photos as well. I could. Oh maybe, no, yeah. no, yeah, no, yeah, the, the, no, the, the oily no. Fantasy. I mean, his I've nickname seen, is Fantasy, like. right? No. Shout out to Soren for, but uh. Complexity really like we we've been hyping them or at least I personally have been hyping them as the the best school in Hearthstone. Like you go yep. there, you're you're going to be big. This is what happened mm -hmm. to Dog. This is what happened to Shaw. This is what's happening to Super JJ. Uh, Crane is obviously ridiculously talented, and now Lion has is going the same way. Jesus Christ, so much talent in Complexity. Like honestly, together with SK Gaming, probably the 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 best team. Uh, in Hearthstone so far uh, this year, 
Oh, oh, can we can we talk about AKA? Can we? About what? Can we, can we talk about AK Wonder? I mean, come on, that 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 victory cheer. That come victory, on, that victory roar, man! I love, I fucking love AK Wonder, man. One of my, oh my god, my, my most favorite players in Hearthstone. Um, I think, like he, he told me on Twitter that I was the first to uh, to mention him as a potential BlizzCon attendee. Uh, mm -hmm. I I, didn't, I don't remember this, uh, but if he says it, it must be true. But we have a ongoing bromance. We actually had to. Uh, almost interview him today for another project we, that we are starting uh, with uh, one of my Ghost Gamers colleagues. is is going to be cool. We actually recorded the first episode. I still have to edit and upload it to YouTube. But Skype fucked us over, so ah! act surprise, act surprise, act surprise. So you will be seeing AK Wonder in a uh, in an intimate chat with um, in a sh in a in our brand new show very soon, as well as Naiman and other people to come. Uh, I, I don't think this is. This has been announced or even teased anywhere else. So yeah, enjoy. Well alert. Enjoy uh, teasers on the Innervated about other Ghost Gamer show coming into pipeline. But yeah, man, fucking so happy about AK Wonder. Like Thais and L AK Wonder both bought in the championship. I myself don't have any trouble deciding who to root for because I've been fanboys of them since their the, their breakout games like it's but but now let me ask you if it comes down to basically Tice and AK who are you going for I'm going to rub myself in oil and because <laughs> <laughs> what, what other choice do I have what other choice he's gonna do I fap have? with one hand and thumb himself in the butt with his, what, what the other what other choice uh, do I have yeah and I'm I'm going to record it and send videos to uh, to all my uh, one and a half friends uh, oh. God, I'm who's the half one <laughs> I, I will not. I will not say. I will not say. Um, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. But let's talk about some serious points uh, about the HTTP preliminaries. And one of the things was a lot of people expressed concerns that uh, these were actually held in bars across the country. And this is the second time Blizzard are doing it now. And while applauded the whole initiative of let's putting a Hearthstone in a tower where it belongs, a lot of competitors expressed, uh, you know problems occurring with with their venues uh, most mm. notably this was the UK venue the, in, in London I believe where both uh, Green Sheep and Blackout reported on problems and then we had Cypher actually disconnecting on stream uh, because well the the, he, he the venue was connected not... via Ethernet he was yeah. connected via Wi-Fi versus Ethernet how are you gonna do a stream match via fucking Wi-Fi that's just retarded and yeah. I mean it, it does bring a uh, you know a serious topic to discuss like why is are not are these venues not policed properly by blizzard like uh i'm not sure if, if they're sending any of their um you know admins or, or employees to check the venue or do they just you know somebody applies you know send some photos that yeah we, we can host this because uh, I, yeah. I know that for example in poland they move from from one uh, city to another and this year's uh, venue was much shittier according to you know, whoever was in the Polish um, prelims. I think uh, Loyan was. Uh, maybe maybe Loyan was um, yeah. was talking about it. But yeah, I mean, who does tournaments over Wi-Fi? This is the biggest qualifier yeah. of the of the season. Yeah, and I wish that to say that this was the only issue, at, but there were more. That was what happened at Copenhagen Games as well, and they quickly learned to get up some cables because only shit that stuff does not work. No, it doesn't. I mean, you know, Wi-Fi is radio frequency, and that could be interfered with in uh, many ways. And the farther from point A and to point it B, it's got to go. The, yeah, the and you can't box. really scale it up as well. Like you can't, Ooh. like you can't multiply your connection by two hundred and then have it work with two hundred people. It doesn't work like that. No, oh, I mean, it, you could have the best router in the world, but you're still fucked. So, but I wish this was the only issue that we got from HTC, but it really wasn't. I mean, I've gotten reports from uh, some a venue in I'm not going to say where because I don't want to call out my source on this, but in Central Europe, where the venue, as long as the match was not streamed, they were allowing like two to three people to sit in the booth where they were playing the game. Thus, co-opting was happening. Now, again, this is kind of hard to prove, hard to stop this, that, and the other, but it's one of these things that should not be allowed, and as a venue organizer, person who's basically hosting this, this should have never been allowed to happen to begin with. I mean, but it th did. This is the point of offline qualifiers, right, so that you can avoid 
shit like this like otherwise why not just do it with everybody in their own home you will save travel money for the players you will save mm-hmm. admin costs right you will yeah. save uh because the whole point is to to control the players because it's an important tournament like pe- people are asking oh why are they why are they not doing online because you have to control it it's, it's mm-hmm. the same uh you know in this in the in the same capacity you can ask why is dreamhack not online well because it's a fucking big tournament for with uh, you know tens of thousands of dollars like uh HTT, uh preliminaries are uh you know qualifying you for eighty thousand dollar tournament which then qualifies you to a million dollar tournament exactly i mean to be, to be properly policed and offline having it offline is the proper way to police it but then like if you're not going to police it properly like what the fuck do you even bother and i know that there have been tremendous discrepancies between the quality in the venus because uh the dutch guys like ties and um Jesus. was it just high school comedy like the players had you know separate player rooms uh outsiders were not allowed in the connection was good so like they, they could play games in a proper tournament environment while other uh you know venues like the the, the infamous london venue well, mm-hmm. they, they had to play near a bar. Like, uh, we give black. Well, that, that was like winner, for winner for for Germany, where they had it in like a tavern there, and people yeah, exactly. were fucking smoking and drinking, and yeah. So I mean, <laughs> if you're gonna create an environment where these players are going to play in, and for this big competition, shouldn't that environment be replicated and be universal across the field, not just a one-off scenario <laughs> here? And you know, you need to create a standard, and this is not creating a standard. This is creating chaos and anarchy. So uh, I don't agree with this whole setup. I never did agree with this whole setup the way Blizzard's doing. I know why they're doing it. Because it's creating it's real life involvement, and it's cheap to where they don't have to host any goddamn thing. They put it on other people, and it draws attention to those venues for obviously their own reasons. But I don't agree with it. I I think if you're gonna do something like this, you need to centralize it to like maybe six locations. I mean, in Europe, that's gonna be a little bit harder, but still. And each one of those locations needs to be exactly the same as every other location in that region. So Raven is saying uh, the the fault is that is on the shitty organizers and all Blizzard. Yes, mostly, but not entirely. But because this is fucking Blizzard's events. If there was any other event well this is it like it's it's the fucking blizzcon qualifiers so you cannot say oh well it's the shitty organizer we it's it's not our fault no you, you have to uh, control your third parties mm-hmm. like you, you have to have blizzard people there at least if if, if if like in the venues that you know that are problematic like if, if the dutch uh, venues are fine well sure maybe have less uh, less involvement there but uh, with uh, with UK, with Germany, who have been repeatedly reported for being problematic and shitty venues, send somebody to control the, the things. Like it's, it, it's it's the same way you do it for uh, for BlizzCon, right? Like you, you cannot yeah. say, well, yeah. And, and it, Raven, I agree with you. ESL does do an amazing job. They honestly do an amazing job. I've seen their work over time. They, they've slipped up here and there, but for the most part, they're fucking solid. <laughs> So yeah, um, again, it's Hello. this shit needs to be po- <laughs> <laughs> suck a bad, <laughs> suck a bad podcast. Uh, Stefan is getting aggro mount, uh, mount aggro. <laughs> but that, uh, I mean, obviously, these, these things need, need yeah. to be standardized. And yeah, uh, as Raven says, the production was amazing. Probably, and I'm uh, I want to to bring the topic up. It's uh. Probably the first tournament I see that figured out perfectly what to do with pauses between games. There was no mm-hmm. shitty music, there was no blank screen, there was no, uh, you know, camera over the crowds or, you know, screen, like, uh, screens from the from the bars that nobody cares about. We had mm-hmm. uh, the players talk about the meta, the players talk, uh, the casters talk about their predictions. We had interviews, like, everything was filled up to capacity, and I love it. We've I, I think the MVP caster for that whole thing was the chalkboard. Oh yeah, the chalkboard, man. The chalkboard, the fucking hands down best caster EU. You, you know what they should do? They should actually expand it for future tournaments, like uh, and uh, tournaments like DreamHack and Insomnia. When they do these big Swiss tournaments, they should like have a have a like ranking of players. Like, okay, these are the sixteen biggest names to follow. Uh, it, it is arbitrary, but who cares? Like. These are the best best 16 or best uh, 20 or best 30 players to follow this weekend. And then just, like, in between pauses, go and scratch who's out. 
or like update yeah. them with scores like well, well, in TJ's case, I think they should move to more of a magnetic, you know, thing that you just put over the person's name. That way he doesn't have to try to remove the X because he fucked up. That was funny. I laughed no, my ass uh, I, I, I agree, man. Like, uh, Revan is making a good point because, uh, you know, the players are not in a single place. They're all over Europe. So to actually organize this and uh, broadcast without breaks, without, uh, you know, broadcast breakups, without missing cameras, this was fantastic. It's probably the most challenging tournament to organize like in my eyes like I, i've never worked in production but i have to imagine this was a herculean task because you know uh when you work and i, I don't mean to devaluate dream hacker and so many but when you work with players that are all in one space even if there are mm -hmm. 200 players yeah it's kind of manageable try 200 players in what well, 20 different places all across Europe. Exactly. I mean, in a DreamHack venue, you know, because everybody's there, you, you could get away with, like, one producer, one director, and, you know, a couple of guys who are basically always, you know, making sure everything's moving along. But in a much more spread out thing, you're talking about, like, directors, producers, and a plethora of more hands needed in order to keep those Skype calls going, get everything ready, set up the next set of screens. I mean... My hat's off to ESL. I've done similar shit like this before, so I, 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 I already know how difficult this shit is, and this was on a much larger scale. So, my hat's off, man. They did a That's fucking phenomenal job. Yep, and Blizzard can only be paying them too little. Agreed. Agreed. <laughs> I mean, ESL, gonna pay. Yeah. Is gonna pay us? We've given ESL a lot of flag over the years, and other people have too, but when they do a good job, they do a good job, man. Like, you cannot take anything away from them. Uh, let's let's talk about a little bit about the meta game at HDU Spring. Obviously, the second really big tournament after DreamHack Austin, representing the the standard, um, well, the standard meta game. And I, I did a pretty cool stats analysis uh, and breakdown of the class of the archetypes, which you, which you can go read at ghostgamers.net slash Hearthstone. I was on Reddit too for about a day and a half. Um, basically, we we collected all eight hundred or so close to nine hundred actually deck lists. From all the participants across the Tavern Hero and the, the preliminary tournament, put them into crafts to just like, okay, let's see what the meta will look like. And we had a lot of Nazoth Paladins, which was actually oh, the yeah. most represented uh, archetype of all. Like, I think of 222 players, 109 or 10 had Nazoth Paladin in their lineup. So I expected, well, okay, every single one of the, uh, the big players, uh, the ones who qualify, will be featuring some kind of Nzopla, because obviously there's the hot shit now. Then Tyson L came on Twitter said and commented, oh, I think this is a mistake, and people will regret bringing it, and as we saw, only half of the players going to the HTU Spring Championship actually used Nzop Paladin. Uh, in fact, it was Warlock and Shaman, which were the omnipresent classes. Uh, Shaman being split uh, equally between aggro and midrange, and Warlock, I think it was 5-3 to three in favor of Zoo. Dunk. Zoo and a Reno bastard Zoo thing. And, Zoo and Reno, yes. So, wh yeah. what do you guys make of it? Like, why is... Did just people go, you know, ham uh, trying to counter Zod Paladin? Miracle Walk also, you know, not performing as well as I expected. Like, it's... No, it does great on ladder, though, but that's ladder. Um, it, this is that old tale all over again. You know, what works in a tournament doesn't always work too well in ladder, and what works in ladder doesn't always work too well in tournament. When in the case of Warlock and Shaman, these are decks that are very explosive, uh, are pretty consistent in their gameplay. So, I mean, you don't, generally don't have too many bad openings for them. When you look at an Azoth Paladin, your opening is almost everything in determining how well you're going to do. And then you're pretty much begging for some good top decks as you're going into your mid-game. So that's really easy to exploit with decks such as Warlock, with decks such as Shaman. Hell, any kind of burst potential deck can shut that deck out completely. So, yeah, Tice actually does have a point on this, but at the same time... In a control matchup, the Nazoth Paladin wins most of the time. So, yeah. it's uh. like I want to say, Paladin like Patron Warrior never got a, got that high up above uh, fifty percent either, but it was yeah. always the deck to beat. And I think that's kind of the same thing with Nazoth Paladin right now. It's it's the deck you beat, and it's the deck everyone plays around. So, even though it's not showing that much, I still think we are going to be present. Because as soon as people kind of slow down and it 
and you know start to disregard it, it's gonna kick right back again because it is powerful like well i mean with hex coming back in the meta that really shuts down a huge amount of the power potential of nazoth Let, let's be yeah. perfectly honest that shuts down nazoth real nicely yeah it does um so the question is what's gonna be tech like are we gonna see sock off to make them cry tears of <laughs> who knows I know. um i expected that uh, freeze mage would be a thing because Freeze Mage is actually usually has usually been favored against slow paladins like this, but apparently Crane and his uh, test group figured out that if you play, you know, obviously both forbidden healings and Ragnar Slither, which it obviously do the match is actually favored in paladins' favor if you paladin. Yeah, that's oh, just yeah. Too, way I mean, too he, much he health. Yeah, he way too much health, and he ended up just sucking away all of his damage potential just to deal with the board. It was the most strategic, brilliant tactical play I've seen in a long time, and but, my hat like, popped when, when we saw When we saw Nyman play it, um, you know, play the matchup at Dreamhack Austin, like, we, we were saying this, like, right, you know, uh, th th this is Freeze Mage's game, and uh, all of Tars played it pretty well, you know, just like, Nyman, well, yeah, I have 30 damage, you cannot go over 30 as a Paladin, so you're fucking dead. It's I'm like, not sure they yeah. played double Kodo at that point, because Kodo kills the Doomslayer, okay? Yep. Yep. I'm, I'm, um, like, I don't know if that's the tech of... evolution that happened, but that's probably like one of the things that, if changed, would favor it too. It's actually one of the techs that I'm seeing now become standardized in all the Nazoth Paladins, because at first it was like oh, yeah. one humili Humility, one Kodo. Now they're finding room to actually carry two Humilities and two Kodos, so it's like, this is obviously a tech that's really yeah, good, because yeah, if you think about it outside of those control matches, it also works against, say, um... Imp Gang boss, it works against a lot of what um, uh, Warlocks really want to bring to the board. Uh, against Shaman, though, it kind of falls flat on his face in many aspects. I can kill uh, Spoodwolf. That, no, that, or Manatai yeah. Totem. Um, or Manatai, it can, but remember, their hero power is always going to create multiple different sure, things that it could possibly yeah. target onto, so... But it's uh, you know the the color is coming back into uh, into meta man like it doom is probably the most hated card right now just because oh my god all is nerfed but like the crazed scientist stacks that we saw at austin you know we keep seeing them and on other two like i <sighs> turn to doom series so good yeah it, it like gets a card so again hard. it with it comes back to that certain bird having a terrible accident you know it's like, without yeah, Aaron being out. Get rid of one staple, introduce three new ones. Thanks. Yep, that's how it works. <laughs> yeah. Right. Thanks, Blizzard. <laughs> gotta, gotta see where the meta will go. Um... I do think that Doomsayer, if there's gonna be a classic cleanup for next year, the Doomsayer will be on a lot of people's prediction list. I do. Um, really I'm sure that there will be, like... Didn't they say they, they want to nerf class uh, cards yearly, or this is just my wishful thinking, creating false I memories? just want them to make a core set, like, seriously. Well, I, I think Doomsayer probably is going to get some love in the future, because, let's be honest, Blizzard has pretty much said, look, we want you to use your class-based removals, not these generic neutral ones that everybody is flocking to. All right, this is the same reason they fucked with Tinkmaster Overspark, because it was the go-to fucking choice. It was basically a hex for everybody. Yep. Um, and they I, wanted I, I to I don't think that. they will nerf them, Sarah, man. It's... I think they might increase the cost of it, but that's about yeah, it. Yeah, or reduce its health. Like, it's yeah. one of the two. Like, make it five health. That's still impressive for uh, two mana threats. That's always so yeah, I... killable, though. Yeah, uh, well, I mean, if you really like think about can, it... you can if, war if, if you can fire... Yeah, you could war accident and trade, but I mean, if you could, you know, just force a fireball out of your opponent's hand, then didn't that Doomsayer actually accomplish something? Nope. You don't think so? Nope. It's one for one trade. <laughs> All right. All right. But anyways, um, Temple Warrior was also uh, going to be big. Obviously, like, uh, it was the most uh, represented warrior archetype uh, fighting. Uh, I, I think he had like 20 more representations compared to Control Warrior. Pedrin is almost dead, by the way, guys, so we're not even going to talk about it, but... Um, you know, I, Like, Temple Warrior is just so strong so against strong. Shaman. Um, like, the War Axe completely cancels the early game. Um, yeah. And 
Varian just seals the deal. Like I mean, Varian is. You so were Stephen. You were hyping Varian as as soon as it came out. It took him some time. To yeah, finally yeah. Here, but here he's half. finally here. He's finally here. Yeah, he's here and he's doing work. Like I also kind of said that you know we saw in the Archons tournament that Varian's pretty strong. So I also said he might come back. And yeah, he is here. And boy, is he here. Varian I, win. I think like the win, biggest legendary yeah. in that deck that is the most volatile in that design is Malkarok because I will tell you right now we saw when curse playing blades, whatever. Curse, oh my god I can't tell you how many curse blades I've gotten off of nor can I tell you how many times I've faced up somebody against somebody who got curse blade and then I won instantly oh hoy he had one uh, yeah so I mean high. you you get the curse blade you might as well just concede because you're fucked you've what? got three turns of this bullshit in your hand yeah. Anyways, uh, anything else we want to talk about uh, regarding HD Spring? Yes. No. Probably uh, not. Casting. Oh, the casting. I know. I know that you, you, Stefan, was pretty disappointed about the, the casting, or at least like part I, of it. I watched a surprising amount of Hearthstone this weekend, and uh, I, I caught a lot of moments like that just made me. The new guy. Their new guy was not particularly good. <laughs> Well, like I, mean, I was like I heard stuff like really you know he like I heard stuff like this he he can play his mana tie totem onto the doomsday I'm not sure which of them triggers first and I'm like no that's no that's not obvious at all you know one of them triggers at the end of turn the other one waits till the start of next one like that's very simple ordering and even if they triggered at the same timing they would both trigger because that's how half stone works mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, but the, I mean, the the, 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 the Newcastle were left me pretty disappointed, man. Like it's, uh, I I feel that the guys they found with the with the winter prelim, preliminary, uh, caster surge were big heads. Like obviously Aquablight is my colleague, uh, mm -hmm. so I might be a bit biased, but he's seriously good caster. And Songbird is also, uh, you know, growing. All right. Uh, she, hey, she's man. at least all right, right? But but she's she's yeah. fairly good. Okay, so yeah. it's. I've seen uh, worse. I've yeah, we've seen we've seen worse, but we've seen way worse. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm not saying that the um, the, the new dude can improve and can cross the guess, but I think he should stop playing Hearthstone first before <laughs> before going on yeah. casting the biggest qualifier tournaments, uh, you know, in the region. Um, I mean, again, I mean, we'll, we'll say what we say always. Like, I'm gonna say the same as I said to Cora. You know, if he performs at BlizzCon, nothing he does here will matter. But yeah. Gear up, okay? Get in gear, get yeah. some study up, you know? He, he needs to stop playing the game hard because I know that, uh, for example, TJ is somebody with, like, a lot of people have been talking about and hyping about as, like, how ridiculously good he is. He is that ridiculously good because he plays a fuck ton. Like, Dude, he's... not only that, he's been getting a lot of work, not just in the, the Blizzard events as well. He's been doing the Onog events with Admirable, and he's definitely stepped up his game in there. And when he first came on the scene, he was a little, uh, they didn't really give him much of attention. But now as he's coming into his own, he's fucking hitting all those marks that we expect from a caster. So my hat's off to him, too. He's doing a phenomenal job. Raven, take notes. <laughs> are we just going to bash on Raven until the podcast is over? Just because who are you talking to? This is like a daily event, right? Right. I mean, because we are usually so friendly and you know polite and politically correct. Ha ha, politically correct. Ha! ha. <laughs> what, what a nice segue to to our mini topic. Uh, now uh, this is coming also towards known the, as let the fire uh, burn. Uh, this is coming. Aren't we forgetting the, something? Are we forgetting something? What are we forgetting? Star ladder. Well, we did kind of mentioned star ladder. Yeah, I'll put. All right, uh, let's talk about the groups here. I mean, we, I mentioned the groups. Enough Did of we? this. I guess. Enough of this. No more style error. They they like us as we are, so we don't need to to keep hyping them uh, even let, more. Let, let's hope Cipher doesn't get his third disconnect in a tournament. Go Cipher, you can do it. I believe in you. If no, let, actually, that that brings me to another point. F two K had six players make it into the winter, or I mean, the spring preliminaries. That that they were more represented than any team, and they almost had a guy make it to the top eight, which almost. It was Cipher, right? Almost. 
Yeah, Cypher. I mean, that that guy is a, is a phenom he, in so many ways. He's sick, man. Like, Cypher is serious. I, 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 I do believe I predicted him to be a top-notch player. It's up to the watch. Oh, did coming. you? Oh, wow. Yeah, I, I oh. believe I said that, so go fuck yourself. Oh, I will. I will. <laughs> like, literally, after the show, I will go do this. Yeah, yeah. you you and Fantasy can go lube up with, you know, Cocoa Butter and rub around on each other. Yeah, I mean, we are old lovers, man, since the, the old Ghost of Gamers version 1 times. So, oh man, like, how this exactly is... did he break his toe? Oh, it's <sighs> bedroom secrets, man. I can, I cannot, I cannot reveal more. But anyways, um, fantasy uh, right now is thinking is like, okay, I gotta oh, get to Florida, and kill this motherfucker. I want to talk about a a minute topic, which is kind of a big topic, but we are keeping it tight for the purpose of the show, and I'm going to say why. Um, in the previous episode, we mentioned obviously about the the rampant racism and bigotry that happened during Dreamhack Austin and how this was like a totally not good thing to do, uh, to put it mildly. So our good uh, recurring co-host Toes the Badger wrote a blog on ghostgamers.net titled Enough is Enough, which went, caused more uproar and went more viral than any of us expected. Like it was, I think like 3k upvotes on Reddit. Uh, suddenly it was mentioned on uh, Daily Dot. PC gamer, mm-hmm. uh, some mainstream Beast tech of the sites. pie. It's it it was everywhere, right? So we like she she went when she wrote like yeah I'm probably going to be downloaded on Reddit because nobody there likes me. I could not promote it on Reddit because I was you know you know fixing my ratio at the time. So we were not really optimistic about the future of this piece. Like we knew it was it had to be uh, spoken out, written out, had to be uh, mm-hmm. put on a major publication. We ne- we didn't have any idea how big it would grow, and I'm um, like I can all hype the, the piece now because it's ex- extremely well written for somebody who's not you know a writer. Um, actually written better than some pieces written by fucking writers. Oh, <laughs> yeah. ESPN. Um, <laughs> so uh, yeah, yeah, it's uh, so so Toast talks about <coughs> uh, you know how she views the event from moderator's point of view, uh, addresses. Uh, you know where where the failures were, like what what caused the entire uh, racism to to go, uh, you know, out of hand and spread to us Twitch chat. Uh, and we'll actually have a special episode of the Innervetted as soon as I can schedule it. I know I wanted to have it on Sunday, and then on Monday, but those, those, the battery was not feeling well, so we we keep delaying it. We're we're going to have her argue against, uh, you know, on. Uh, the opposition, basically, a guy who believes that Twitch chat should be left to its own accord and, you know, just be left to its, uh, be as it is right now. We don't need uh, censorship, we, we don't need moderation. So, certainly a lot of strong points will, re- will be represented in the debate. Again, I do not know where, when this will happen, because both times I said, this is the date, something, you know, came in to jinx it, um, and it's pretty serious. So I'm I'm not gonna put any data up as soon as I have something more solid on uh, in the schedule. I'll let you guys know. Uh, I know that uh, the idea, of, at least for the debate, is rubbing a lot of people the wrong way. Um, yeah, they're trying to frame it as this whole um, this is all about free speech and censorship. This is about you know they're they're trying to go to one polar extreme to the other. Nobody right. wants to actually look at viable solutions. Nobody wants to actually have a discussion yeah, about I'm, it because I'm, they, I'm worried, they're all stuck on their own bullshit. Yeah, I'm worried because actually this comes from the from both sides. Like I've seen uh, people with radical and extreme opinions on both sides of the spectrum. Like mm-hmm. uh, you know, there are Reddit guys that are saying, "Oh, any moderation you put on the Twitch chat is a violation of free speech." Which is no, it's not. Just dude, go back to which is a private school. organization and or service. It's a company. Your ability to have free speech on it is null and void. That's why you can't say certain things on Twitter. That's why you can't say certain things on Facebook. Free speech only applies in reality and within the press. Private organization. Not even that. Like, not even that. Like, does free speech apply. means that you cannot be arrested and put to jail for things you say. Yeah, pretty right. much. Basically, that's yeah, the it, government yeah. cannot arrest you. You can get thrown out by any private yeah. entity. For your... Like, if, if, if I there said... Are, there if are I... exceptions to that rule. Like, if you threaten to kill somebody, I... obviously, yes, you can. Because I'm yeah. giving this example, like, right. If I go to, like, a black neighborhood in the States, right, just example, and say, all niggers should hang, which was said in Twitch chat, uh, I should probably like... not be able to go away untouched 
by claiming free speech. Like, I'm gonna get pretty beaten up, if not killed. No, no, but... you're, you're just not gonna get arrested, but you're gonna get your ass handed yeah, to you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's there's consequences to everybody's action. Yeah, okay, so, yes, so... you have free speech, but you must accept the consequences of that free speech. Obviously, yeah. But but there have always also been people on the... They have radical extreme opinions on the censorship side, uh, like pro-censorship side, saying that, oh, you know, even considering a debate is, uh, I quote, uh, insult to decency, I'm not going to say who quoted it, you know who you are. Actually, you should take a break from Twitter, buddy, as we told you. Uh, you know, take a chill pill for a bit there. But, you know, I, I do believe that this debate and discussion needs to happen so that, uh, you know, both sides maybe find some midway uh, like a midpoint to where they can meet because I and I, I know that Toast the Badger is as well advocates that there is a middle crowd to be found. I don't, I don't think that everything on Twitch should be censored or moderated. Uh, I, I don't think there's offense in in every mode in every joke. Mm -hmm. but obviously, you know, malicious vitriol needs to be moderated and chased out. Like I'm, I, I'm, I agree. And and Niger, can I can I have the floor for a minute? All right, so he, I'm gonna break this down in the simplest ways that everybody can. I'm actually sober right now, so this would be really fucking easy wow. for me. All right, so you got one side that's screaming, "Oh, we shouldn't have people making fun of everybody, being like vicious and vitriol, and you know, we need our safe space on you know such and such platform." And to, to have this happen during an event is just an atrocity. Okay, well. When it comes down to it, this is goes to organizational standards. Either Twitch needs to put these types of filters in place to where this stuff can happen, and but even then, that's not going to catch everything. That's not going to catch no. it. One of the biggest ones I saw is like, "Are you playing Fierce Monkey?" You know, come on now. Okay, that was like a sublime racist comment right there. So at that point, it really does come down to the moderators. Now, hey, guess what? Moderators, this great little thing called Nightbot. There's Moobot and all that. And you can set a whole lot of filters where it automatically bans it. Trust me, my donger posts get fucking nuked instantly. I know it works. So, yes, it is fucking workable. So, there is a little bit of culpability that, one, has to be shared with Twitch, and two, has to be shared with an event organizer taking the proper steps. Now, Toast was one of these organizers or admins of this, and she was just overwhelmed with it. And I, I really kind of wish that, like, the people at DreamHack would have actually taken the time to invest in a proper filtration. All right? It, they really should have. But the downside here when you create too much of a quote-unquote safe space and create too much censorship is you end up going to alienate a significant portion of your viewer base that normally comes to Twitch. Because let's be honest, people yep. talk shit on the internet because they're fucking assholes and the anonymity gives them this sort of feeling of safeness that they can do whatever the fuck they want and not actually have to pay any physical consequences to it. We all know in reality, I'd be the first one there with a baseball bat smashing your fucking head in for saying that stupid ass shit. However, in the internet, my bat does not go through my fucking router. <laughs> yes, I'm no, working on it. <laughs> but the more you try to restrict and censor something, the less appealing something becomes. So what we are possibly looking at, if we go completely into the SJW PC correct, you can't really say anything, is the decline of Twitch viewership numbers, which in turn will affect esports in general. And that is a concern I've heard for. I've seen, and I actually do share that. So I, there has to be a middle ground. There yes, must absolutely. be a middle ground. Because there must I, I think a lot of... And to say that there should not be any discussion, that is fucking ignorance, and that is fucking bullshit. If you are not willing to discuss it, you have no business offering any goddamn point of view to the topic. Um, the problem has always been that, like, you know, esports want to be, you know, Twitch's equivalent to professional sports, professional, you know, uh, sh showings. But the rest of Twitch is all reality. Like, Twitch does not have the professional settings. They do not have the weather lady. They do not have the politician that's so formally dressed you can't make out anything about her shape. Like, everything is just the equivalent of Paradise Hotel. The absolute lowest... Uh, <laughs> the, the lowest bargain ever for views. It's just... It's, it's, the, it's the streaming version of Plague Bait. And yeah. this socialism. and this culture of cancer has just been grown out from everywhere. Like it's just everywhere from male streamers being drunk to females being 
Twitch girls. We have 14 year olds on Twitch making Twitch chat engage in profession in competitive pedophilism. Like this culture of cancer goes deep and Twitch has much of its own fault is that much of its own fault for this culture and I don't think it can be changed, but I do think there are tools to to rein it, easen it up a bit. Yeah. Um, and like a stream with twenty five thousand viewers is never going to work as one chat. So one thing I don't understand, Switch doesn't have is individual chat rooms. Like mm -hmm. games have had those for bloody. Centuries. Almost. Oh my God! Yeah, slash this, like, slash that. Slash why this. does every channel only have one single chat room? Like, I I know we can't like hundred would be the usual size, but I don't think we can cut down into two hundred and fifty um, chat rooms. But then a thousand maybe. That that those kind of channels gets way more manageable. It doesn't. Another thing that's a problem here is that when it scales up so much, the first victim is well thought out chat. Like respect takes effort. Respect and you know, respect takes time, and you're not gonna waste that when your message just gets thrown up in at the speed of light. So. When you have a slower, more focused chat because it's cut down to maybe max a thousand viewers, then you suddenly get more intelligent conversation. So I think that's one of the things Twitch needs to get on. But I don't, I don't think I don't think has, has made there's this no, point, which is a really good one actually. There's no, no he, amount of yeah. censorship that's going. There's no amount of moderation. Like yeah. you, you would need a hundred moderators. To manage a, a single channel that gets views like DreamHack, you it cannot be done. Yeah. So there, there, there's also an interesting little psychological thing. The more you tell somebody no, you're not allowed to do this, the more they're going to tend to do it. Like look at the war on drugs as a prime fucking example. No, smoking weed's bad. No, doing coke is bad, and yet it still happens and it grew. So I mean, the more you try to police something. It, with negative things to restrictions, removals, and all that stuff, it's still going to find its own unique way of happening again. I gave you the example of the whole, oh, are you playing with Pierce Monkey? It's not like saying, hey, you're an N-word, or wow, you should hang because you're an N-word, or whatever, but it's a sublime racist thing that gets through almost every single fucking filter because it's a card in the game. People are going to draw parallels. People are going to use metaphors. People are going to use whatever ways they can to get around whatever system you put in place. The only true way you can solve this shit is education, discussion, and exposure. All right? When you say these stupid ass things, your name, your address, your personal information in some way should be made public to where, hey, this guy is a racist piece of shit. Here you go. Now, I don't generally like this tactic because I've seen this used way too much by the SJWs in order to shame and possibly, you know, punish people out. But at the same time, I think Twitch should be banning IPs at the very least for fucking these violations. At the very fucking least. Oh, you want to act like a racist fuck on our system? Boom. Have a nice day. Get the fuck on. But that requires Twitch to have moderation. Like, they can that, barely be That would be require ass. Twitch to get off its fucking ass and not just... They, can barely, they can barely manage to... They can barely manage to have the streamers follow the rules, like... Oh, God, don't like, even get me started on... Yeah. Yeah, like, seriously. Any... Except, of course, if you're a low-ranked streamer. They... Those things... Those girls get banned instantly just for reports. Like, that's a public secret, but... I mean, if you fuck, are how long did Hassan get to go unfettered before they finally did something? You yeah, know, like... But if you're a big time streamer, you can bloody smoke, you can drink, you can whore, you can do Wait, everything that. <laughs> Vape you Nation know. is allowed. Vape Nation is allowed. This, this, this is an e cigarette, I swear. Don't, don't. <laughs> it's, it's only a topic that can be discussed for ages, and we are going to do yeah. this because I think, I believe that this needs to be out in the open and talked about as much as but, possible yeah. because it's, it, there isn't a magical solution out there. Like, there's just, like, 
one singular piece of action that we have to do and then uh, the action is, like the problem is solved no this, this will come uh, through discussions through taking actions so yeah. if, if you are opposed to uh, to discussion well I couldn't give it less shits about you um, there's the door go fuck yourself yeah. Uh, we'll end the show here, guys. Uh, quite a bit, uh, a, a bit shorter. I think even shorter than previous episodes. But I really want to leave this Twitch discussion for its own special episode happening whenever it does. Because uh, you know, I, I want to, to have both sides of the argument uh, present in uh, on the episode. So that the and, and this, really this is what I like about this whole thing. When I heard there was going to be a discussion, I was like, "Thank you," because I don't agree with one side and I don't agree with the other to, side, I, I but I do to... agree there has to be a middle ground. So, uh... and, I, and I've gotten a lot of flack on that. But hey, one other thing before we go to this: seven more days till Overwatch. Fuck off, seven, bitches. Yes, Ooh, I pre-ordered the other day, so yeah, I'm gonna play. Really? I pre-ordered like a month ago. Yeah, but wrong? I, I played a shit ton of it and I didn't have money for You know what? But you can eat a bag of dicks. I hate yeah, you. I, I will. I will. Um, I promise. You know what? We're, we're, we're going to play together. We're going to play together. We're going to play together, sir. Of course we are. But anyways, uh, th- thank, you, over you. thank you so much for joining us for the 45th episode of Dinner Vetted. Uh, join us next Tuesday once again. Again, uh, Reminding that we are not streaming on Monday. Streaming on Tuesday. From now on, uh, same time, 9 p.m. CST, um, right here on twitch.tv slash Ghost Gamers. Follow the show on YouTube, um, again, Ghost Gamers, as well as subscribe to it on iTunes and SoundCloud. Just search for Ghost Gamers, you'll find it. Um, yeah, you can follow us uh, at Sumodin on Twitter, at LG underscore the chief, and me at GG Nigra. Follow our work at ghostgamers.net slash Hearthstone. We were publishing a shitload of deck lists uh, recently because finally we have some good big tournaments happening. Um, Dude, you had a Yogg Saron Druid deck I on there. That was Saron amazing. Yeah, uh, stay tuned, guys. Uh, see you next week. And until then, one more week to Overwatch. Yay! Suck a bad podcast. <laughs>